people get involved in your campaign. They say, you know what? I love this woman. I love what she's doing. She's fighting for us. This is John Villarreal reporting for Conservative New Media. Conservative New Media viewers, what's going on? I'm also doing this video and audio for the John D. Villarreal syndicated radio show on the Conservative New Media radio network. We are pleasantly joined right now by Peter Ferreira. Peter has served both in the Reagan administration and in George Bush Senior administration as Deputy Attorney General there. He is a graduate of Harvard and Harvard Law School. He just wrote an unbelievable piece for the American Spectator called The Disgrace of the Ruling Class. We will link to that and, and Peter's extensive biography, which I'm sure I have not nowhere close to fully captured, in the description below. If you click on the link, which is near the view counter, you can check that out. Now, Peter. What made you write this piece and give us a sense of what this piece says and what you're trying to say? Well, I mean, it starts off by talking about the terrible results of Obamanomics. Uh, we had just last week a uh, report that the uh, poverty rate is soaring uh, to record levels now. There's more people in poverty now in America than ever before uh, in history uh, in rec uh, recorded as recorded by the Census Bureau, they've been keep, since they've been keeping track of poverty in the United States. 44 million Americans in poverty is now the most at any time uh, uh, in the 51 years they've been keeping track of poverty. The uh, poverty rate is upward to 14.3%. Uh, 14, uh, 14 uh, and this is just the latest in a series of uh, uh, unfolding disasters. Uh, you have the uh, unemployment rate where 32 months after the uh, uh, 32 months after the uh, uh, re recession started, we find that the economy, uh, according to last year's uh, August labor uh, unemployment re uh, report, uh, the, the economy is still losing jobs. The unemployment rate is still rising. 32 months after the recession re started. Now, uh, before the, uh, previously, the longest recession uh, in, 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 in uh, post since World War II uh, had been 16 months. The after recession was 10 months. Here we are, 32 months after the recession started, and, uh, and we're still losing jobs. And, uh, you know, the National Bureau of Economic Research uh, estimated this recession is officially ending, but the, uh, the fact is that we're still losing jobs and the unemployment rate is still rising. And uh, but that's still be happening 32 months after uh, uh, the recession started. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a disgraceful failure. Uh, then we have the uh, foreclosure rate. Uh, uh, foreclosures are continuing uh, last month in August at record levels. You know, poverty uh, is continuing to shoot up. Uh, and uh, uh, so it, this is the disaster of this uh, Obamanomics. And then you have uh, the economic growth that we do have. We see a, a continuing downward spiral. In the last quarter uh, of last year, uh, the uh, economic growth was 5%. The first quarter of this year, it was down to 3.6%. Second quarter of this year, it's down to 1.6%. So we seem to be headed in the wrong direction. We're heading downward, uh, back, back into a potential uh, double-dip recession. Uh, and uh, uh, so this is the utter failure of what should have been seen as a, uh, a, a backward-looking economic policy going back to the Keynesian economics of the 1970s. And we seem to be getting the same results as the Keynesian economics of the 1970s. In fact, the most recent uh, market data is indicating that deflation is coming back. Gold uh, in the past we resorted to uh, record levels. Uh, uh, silver to, uh, to record levels. Uh, commodity prices are soaring. All this is indicating that while we have this uh, desultory economy, at the same time uh, we've got uh, inflation shooting up, upward. Uh, potentially uh, seems to be on the horizon. The markets are flashing the danger of, uh, of, uh, of inflation arising. So we seem to be heading back to the results of the 1970s. That should not be a surprise since we've had the same uh, Keynesian economic policies in the 1970s. We've gone back pre-Reagan economics as if uh, 1980s, nothing has happened since 1980. And all, we, you know, we thought we elected President Obama that he was going to be this forward-looking progressive president. Instead, he, he's taking us uh, backwards. I and mean, one of the themes they use is, uh, oh, the Republicans have no new ideas. What is the one new idea that Barack Obama has? Yeah. All of his ideas are from the 1970s or the 1930s. That's not new ideas. He seems to be insistent on taking us back to everything that's failed before. And so one of the sad uh, truths that we learn from our own experience with President Obama is that he does not learn from experience. And so, uh, uh, he, so you know, he continues to go back, going back to uh, old, outdated policies, which he should have known would have been a failure. 
Now, I, I want to ask you about that. Now, obviously, this, this I, I agree with you. I think this looks like, you know, New Deal type of stuff, Redux. I think it's Jimmy Carter Redux, and uh, hopefully we're not going to see stagflation, but as you point out, we may well see it. Now, how does it... How do you tie that into to the ruling class? We see this as a failure of the tax and spend, uh, big government, big taxes, uh, type of policies, and the Keynesianism of uh, economic model. But what? How does that tie into the ruling class? And is it because that they they sign on to wholeheartedly that kind of thing, and they have the arrogance of their ruling class status? Look, uh, explain to the viewers and the listeners out there about that. Well, I mean, that was just the beginning of the, uh, the disgrace, the unfolding uh, disgrace. Uh, then there also goes on to discuss the unfolding, the, uh, that was the disgrace of Obama now. Next, then there's the unfolding disgrace of uh, Obamacare, where, you know, he campaigned all across the country uh, telling us that uh, 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 his Obamacare would reduce cost. And uh, what we see is uh, uh, that uh, uh, costs are increasing. And then there was President Obama last week. I had the quote in the uh, article, which he says, uh, uh, well, extending the uh, health insurance to 30 million additional people uh, was obviously going to increase costs. We knew that. Well, everybody knew that, except for him and the Congressional Democrats. We kept telling them that it was going to do that. And they said, oh, no, it's going to actually uh, uh, reduce costs. And uh, now it comes out and says, oh, yes, we knew all along it was going to increase costs. Uh, and that was just... Uh, you know, just one of, one of many things from Obamacare that we talk about in this article. The other thing was uh, he ran around the country telling us when he was trying to sell us Obamacare that, uh, it, you know, uh, we, we kept saying it was going to result in more government spending, a bigger deficit, and he said, oh, no, uh, it's going to reduce the deficit. Right. He kept citing the Congressional Budget Office. It's going to reduce the deficit. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I had an article in the uh, Wall Street Journal, which uh, what got to the bottom of this. What uh, is actually uh, the why is it that the Congressional Budget Office said it would reduce the deficit? Uh, that's because if you look at the annual report of the Medicare Board of Trustees, uh, Obamacare uh, has five trillion dollars in cuts uh, in the uh, Medicare in the first ten years of full implementation. I went through the annual report of the Medicare Board of Trustees, all the data they have year by year, was able to calculate full magnitude. Uh, cuts in uh, Medicare uh, benefits as a result of uh, Obamacare. It comes up to $5 trillion in the first 20 years. Uh, those, those are cuts primarily in the payments to doctors and hospitals by, uh, under Medicare. Now, I mean, what he's doing with Medicare, these are cuts, by the way, for t people, people who are already retired today. He's not saying, oh, we're only going to, you know, we're phase in some future or whatever. It's like these are cuts for people who are already retired today. It's like trying to run a national defense policy where you say, oh, uh, we're just not going to pay the people who <laughs> supply the tanks and yeah. the planes and we make the uh, ships and the bombs and the bullets. Uh, how long do you think a national defense would last uh, uh, under that kind of policy? We're going to see the same thing under Medicare. If the government is not going to pay the doctors and hospitals under Medicare uh, for the health care they're supposed to provide the senior citizens, the senior citizens are not going to get the health care that they've come to expect and rely on. The chief actually of Medicare said uh, already uh, the, uh, 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 that uh, uh, two-thirds of hospitals uh, lose, uh, lose money on Medicare patients. That was before the $5 trillion in, uh, in, cuts. Uh, uh, in, in Medicare uh, cuts. So how, many, you know, how much are they going to lose now? And, so, and what is going to happen to them then in their ability to provide health care to seniors if you're cutting, uh, that drastic, cutting it that drastically? Uh, so, I mean, it would have been nice when the president was running around saying, oh, my Obamacare is going to reduce the deficit, if he had disclosed why because it, uh, it was going to reduce the deficit, because it has these $5 trillion in cuts. So if they don't reverse those cuts, then it's going to create chaos in health care for American senior citizens. Uh, you know, specialists who uh, specialize in treating senior citizens, or whether it's for heart disease or diabetes or uh, even cancer or uh, hip replacements, knee replacements, they're just going to go out of business. They're going to be forced by the economics of what these people are doing wow. uh, to, um, uh, uh, to to go into some other uh, to go into some other specialty. Or as another summary I was reading the other day, the Congressional Budget Office report, which basically says that uh, effectively uh, within a period of years, uh, uh, Obamacare cuts Medicare by 20% and expands Medicaid for low-income people by 20%. So, look, you know, Barack Obama's idea of spreading the wealth here apparently right. turns out to be 
you know, rating uh, Medicare for other uh, uh, uses that his progressive vision deems more worthy, or for other people who his progressive vision deems uh, more worthy. Uh, when did he tell us, you know, exactly he was going to do that? And so the article actually goes through the other sort of lies that were used to pass Medicare and Obamacare, which are now being revealed. So this is another part of the disgrace of the ruling class. And it goes on then to... Uh, well, hold on, hold on a second. I want to, I want to ask a couple points in there, and we're going to get into this. This is great stuff. I want to make sure that the audience is with us and understands everything. So, what you said already is that Obama and Obamanomics have been disgraced. They don't work. That this recession, in a lot of ways, is worse and is recovering worse than other past recessions. And you go through all the the different statistics there and the citations, and people can see this in your American Spectator piece called "The Disgrace of the Ruling Class." Then you go on and talk about the same thing and disgrace in the healthcare piece and how that has been a failure and how he's rating Medicare and how he, you know, that the numbers don't add up. It's creating tremendous burden on the healthcare system. And then you also go on to illustrate how premiums are going up. And then you have uh, Secretary Sebelius coming in there and basically seemingly threatening these insurers that, hey, you better not, quote unquote, tell the truth, as some would say, perhaps. Uh, about you know what's going on with Obamacare, meaning that that you know premiums will go up, and I want to get into that, and I want to get into the third part of the disgrace of the one class called the media bias, and you name names, we're going to get right into that. But I want to try to get at your thinking here about what is the motivation for the ruling class here and for Obama. Do you think that he's doing this as some have postulated to wreck America and install a socialist uh, type system? Do you think that he doesn't know any better? Uh, do you think that this is just to grow government as a lot of the ruling class wants to do? What, what is your best guess, Peter, as to the motivations of Obama and his uh, administration? 